plead your blood, God, over everyone here today, God. I plead your blood, Father, over our minds, God. I plead your blood, God, over our hearts, dear Father, God. I plead your blood over our relationships, God. I plead your blood, God, over our bodies, God. In the name of Jesus, dear Father, God, I plead your blood, dear Father, God. Oh, God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you on today, God. And we bless your name on today, Father, because you are good, God. And your mercy, Lord God, endures forever, dear Father God. You're everlasting to everlasting, dear Father God. You are Alpha and Omega, dear Father God. You are the beginning and the end, dear Father God. In the name of Jesus, dear Father God, we thank you, God, that you are good. You are Jehovah Jireh, God. You are Jehovah Shalom, dear Father God. You are Jehovah Meekness, dear Father God. You are El Olam, dear Father God. You are El Elyon, dear Father God. You are El Shaddai, dear Father. God. So, Lord God, we thank you, God, that you are the mighty God. We thank you that you are the everlasting God. We thank you, God, that you are the God of peace, God. We thank you that you are the God who provides, dear Father God. We thank you that you are a protector, God. In the name of Jesus, dear Father God. Hallelujah, God. Lift up a bow down head today, God. Someone is heavy laden today, Father God. Someone is grieving today, dear Father God. Someone is confused today, dear Father God. Someone feels like they're set apart today, God. That they've been abandoned, God. That they've been rejected, dear Father God. That they're oppressed, dear Father God. In the name of Jesus, God, let them know, God, that you, Jesus, you saved, God. And you are close to the brokenhearted. You're not a million miles away that you are our present help. And we just bless your name on today, God. We thank, we pray, God, that you will permeate this place with your glory, dear Father God. With your power, dear Father God. In the name of Jesus, have your way today, God. In the name of Jesus, you said, well, there's two or three, God. In the name of Jesus that are gathered in your name, God, that you will be in the midst, God. So we know that you're here, God, because you came before us today, God. You were already here, God. You already saturated this place, dear Father God. With your glory, dear Father God. With your power, dear Father God. With your presence, dear Father God. And we bless your name, dear Father God. Hallelujah. Have your way on today, dear Father God. Bless the angel of this house, dear Father God. And camp your angels around them, dear Father God. Continue to hide them under your wings, dear God. Keep his mind, dear Father God. Keep his heart, God. Keep his body, dear Father God. In the name of Jesus, dear Father God, bless him. In the name of Jesus, dear Father God, prepare our hearts and minds to receive your word, God. In the name of Jesus, we ask it all in the name of Jesus, and we receive it all. In the name of Jesus, it is so, and so it is, and so it shall be. In Jesus' name, amen. Be not entangled 
in bondage of yours. Glory to God. That's a word of prophecy for somebody. Somebody needs to know that in the middle of whatever you're going through, no matter where you find yourself today, declare deep in your heart, deep, deep inside, God, I'm going to stand. In the, mid the, in the middle of it all, the, the, the storms may come and beat upon me, but I'm going to stand. Discouragement from every side, but I'm going to stand, oh God. Stand, stand. That's a word of instruction deep into your heart today. Stand. He'll see you through. He, he'll see you through the other side. He'll see you through. He'll carry you through this time where you stand. Your instruction. Your instruction is to stand. Stand. Well, glory to God, glory to God, glory to the name of the Lord, our God. Yes, give God praise today. It's all good. It's all good. I love the Lord because he heard my cry. He pitied every one of my groans. And because of that, because of that, I trust in him. And I'll stand and I'll stand. I will stand. I will stand. My, my responsibility right now is to introduce to you our pastor. This man loves the Lord our God. He prepares a message that's from God himself, fitted directly to you, to, to each of you. Now, you may not have known that he was God was planning to speak to you today, but God gave him a word that was directly for you today. He gave him, he gave, God gave this man of God a word to speak into your very heart today. So I want you to set aside every wandering thought. Clear your mind of every distraction, every one of those things. You worried about the roast you put in the oven? Let that be for a little bit. Forget about that. Yes, you did turn the gas off before you left home. It's, it's all good. Right now, you need to set all of those thoughts and cares and concerns aside and open your mind and your heart to receive the word of God. I want you to, if you will, please stand on your feet. Stand up. Stand up. Let's give a round of applause to our pastor. This man loves the Lord and he loves the people of God. So you ought to be willing. Yes, right. Come on. Give him a round of applause. It's time to receive Pastor Jason L. Flowers. He's got a word for your life on today. Amen. Bless you, man of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. What a mighty God we serve. Amen and hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. If the Lord has been good to you, just say amen. amen. If the Lord has been good to you, say amen. amen. If the Lord has brought you from a mighty long way, just say hallelujah. hallelujah. If the Lord has brought you, I'm going to say it again. If he's brought you from a mighty long way, just raise your hand in exaltation and say hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. You all may have a seat where you can. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So before we get started, I just want to thank all of you all that are here in the sanctuary. and Those that are watching on stream, just want to thank you for taking time to join us here at TCC, where our vision statement is to transform the lives of people through the word of God and the love of Christ everywhere. So now is your time to share. Now is your time to share. Those that are watching on stream, those that are here in the sanctuary, just feel free to share. You can share with your friends, your family at TCC Arizona.
We're on Facebook and we're on YouTube at TCC Arizona. Amen and hallelujah. Amen and hallelujah. So what I want to do today before we get into the word is uh, I just want to have everyone just stand for, if you can, for a second. Just stand. We kind of light in here today. Just kind of stand. I'm not going to ask you to do anything other than just, just go someone. Just go to someone, give them a hug, and let them know that God loves them. Just let someone know that God loves them. We can do that on today. We, we kind of light in here on today. Just let someone know that God loves them. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's good to see uh, some familiar faces. It's good to see some new faces. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. So as you all make your way back to your seat, as you make your way back to your seat, it's going to take some time and go to the Lord in prayer. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Dear Father, we just thank you and we love you and we lift your name on high. You're a great God. You're nothing too big for you. Dear Father, we just thank you for the rising of the sun and the going down of the same. Your name is worthy to be praised. And Father, in the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, I ask that you hide me behind the cross and that the word that goes forth will be edifying unto the souls of your people, that they will hear and see all of you and none of me, that they will hear and see all of you and none of me. In the name of Jesus and the power of your blood, I ask that the word that goes forth will fall on ears that are ready to hear it and a heart that is wide open to receive it. In the name of Jesus, in the power of your blood, right here and right now, we're going to make the devil our footstool so that the word that goes forth will not be dismissed, nor will it be deterred, nor will it be delayed. In the name of Jesus, in the power of your blood, I'm just praying on today that someone, someone, whether here in the sanctuary or watching us on stream, will give their life to you, that they will make you their Lord and Savior and dedicate their life to you. Live a life that's pleasing unto you on today. In the name of Jesus, in the power of your blood, Oh, we give you all the praise, glory, and honor for you are worthy to be praised. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. All right, so we're in our series. So we're in our series. Our series is on unity. Our series is on unity. So if you can just turn to your Bibles, we're going to be right here in Acts 4, 32 through 37. So in your Bible, Acts 4. 32 through 37, and I'll be in the NLT version. Acts 4, 32 through 37. Amen. Amen. And this is what the word says. All the believers were united in heart and mind, and they felt that what they owned was not their own. So they shared everything they had. The apostles testified powerfully to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and God's great blessing was upon them all. There were no needy people among them because those who own land or houses will sell them and bring the money to the apostles to give to those in need. Verse 36. For instance, there was Joseph, the one the apostles named Barnabas, which means son of encouragement. He was from the tribe of Levi and he came from the island of Cyprus he sold a field he owned and brought the money to the apostles. So again, Acts 4, verse 32, all the believers were united in heart and mind, and they felt that what they owned was not their own, so they shared everything they had. Amen and hallelujah. They were in, united in heart and mind, and they shared everything they had. So if I was to tag this message, the title would be One Heart and Soul. One Heart and Soul. Amen and hallelujah. So I'll start out with an illustration for y'all just to get you to where I'm at. So a pastor thought God gave him an idea and he presented it in his monthly council meeting. So after giving his most impassionate plea and really selling the idea to the council, the council voted 
and they voted down the proposed changes from the pastor. They voted it down 12 to 1. He got outvoted 12 to 1. So the moderator, the person that was overseeing the meeting, the moderator looked at the pastor and said, well, pastor, it's 12 to 1. Look like you've been outvoted. Amen and hallelujah. So it looks like it's time for the evening to end. So the meeting was about to adjourn. So the moderator asked the pastor, he said, hey, so will you just go ahead and close us out in prayer? So the pastor, not wanting to give up yet on what he felt God was leading him to do, then he went ahead and led him in prayer. This is how his prayer went. So as he prayed, he lifted his hands up to the heavens and prayed, Lord, I know my brothers here do not have the same vision you have given me. Please help them to see that this is not my vision, but your vision. And at that exact time when he said your vision, at that exact moment, a lightning bolt just came and it, it struck the, the building and a thunder came and it burst through the window in the meeting room, striking the table and splitting it in two and knocking all the council members to the floor all of them on the floor. So as the dust cleared, the pastor looked at the moderator, the one that was leading the, the meeting, and he said to him, he said, so hey, what you think about that prayer? And the moderator, you know, he dusted himself off and he sighed and he said, well, I guess now it's 12 votes to two. <laughs> Amen. And hallelujah. So I thought that would just get us something light to get us started into this passage that we're going to be in. So this is going to be some really good teaching today. So I want you all to track with me in your Bibles. I want you to, to open your ear gate and open your heart and hear what the word that comes from the Lord says today. So this passage that, this, that we just read, Acts 4, 32 through 37, is a, is a small interlude between prayer. So if you look before Acts 4, 32, you'll, you'll see prayer. Amen. And then when you look after Acts 37, you'll see the word of, uh, uh, of the Lord with boldness. Amen. So this here is this passage that we just read is just a, a small interlude between the prayer and the speaking of the word with boldness. Amen and hallelujah. And I want you all to understand something that this is the first struggle. This is the first sign. This is the first sign of internal struggles of the early church. This is the first sign of internal struggles with the early church. So here we get another picture of life in the early church. In the recurring theme, y'all, the recurring theme is unity. This is where, 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 where Luke and, 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 and Paul are trying to get the church to be in unity with one another. Amen and hallelujah. So in this passage, I'm just going to share with you four things, four things, and we're going to get out of here, four things that are keys to spiritual unity for the church. Four things that are spiritual unity for the church. You're going to want to write these things down. You're going to want to study this because I'm going to preach to somebody today. Amen and hallelujah. So the very first thing, the very first thing you want to remember or write down or jot down is the same passion. The same passion as who? The same passion as Christ. The same passion as Christ. So the whole church had the same heart. The entire church had the same heart. And that was a heart that was chasing after God's own heart. And I just want to understand and, and hear from you all. How many of you all have a heart that is chasing after God's own heart? That's where it all starts when we're looking at unity. You got Your heart has to be in, in the right place. Your, your heart has to have the right posture because it has to be a heart that's chasing after God's own. So also it has to be a heart that's ablaze for Jesus. We're talking about Jesus. Your heart has to be ablaze for Jesus. Their passion was to know him in the power of his resurrection. Yes, Jesus was raised from the dead three days later. Amen and hallelujah. And they want to know him in the fellowship of his sufferings. Yes, the time that he was here on earth, Jesus suffered not only for you, but he suffered for me. He suffered and, and they want to know him and, and, and be conformed to his death. Meaning that they want to live a life that's pleasing unto the Lord. Amen and hallelujah. So here's the thing I want you to get is Christ is the main source of unity. If you look at anything that you're trying to accomplish, anything where there's a group of people trying to get from one place to the other or a group of people trying to accomplish a goal or a task, all you got to do is put Christ in it. Put Christ in it. 
because he's the main source of unity. He was the focus of, check us out, their individual lives. Each and every one of them walked a life full of Christ. And thus, when they came together, so they walked the life of Christ. But when they came together, they were what we call really together. They were really together. They were all on the same page and on the same accord because why? In their individual time, they were walking with Christ. So when they came together, yet the whole thing, that synergy thing came into effect. It was no longer one plus one equal two. It was one plus one equal four. Y'all better come get me today. They were really together. They were in love with Jesus. They were in love with Jesus. They lived their lives for him and his glory. It was a lifestyle, y'all. I want y'all to understand that, that this Christianity thing is a lifestyle. This isn't something you can turn on and turn off. It's you good on Sunday, but on Monday you write back to your old self. And then on Wednesday you go to midweek Bible study, you back connected. And then by, by, by listen, by the time Thursday roll around, you back to your old self. And then you're getting ready for church on Sunday. And then on Sunday, you, that's only two days a week. You good Sunday and Wednesday? What about the mother days of the week? You miss, what about the mother five days of the week? How are you rolling the mother five days of the week? Christianity is a lifestyle. And, and how, do we, how do we live that lifestyle? The lifestyle says we have to die to self daily. You got to die to self daily. So that's not a time when you wake up in the morning, you got to say to yourself, I'm not living this life for me. I'm living this life for Christ. This ain't my thing to live. This is how Christ wants me to live my life. And I'm going to do the very best I can when I get outside this door. As a matter of fact, I'm going to start living for Christ right here and right now. I'm going to go pray. Let me start this day out by prayer. And I'm going to live a life for Christ. So it's a lifestyle. I got to get people to really understand that in this day and age, with everything that's coming against us, you got to have a lifestyle of Jesus. You just can't have a couple of days of Jesus. You got to have a lifestyle of Jesus because check this out. The enemy got a lifestyle and he ain't taking no break. The world has a lifestyle and the world is not taking a break. Every time you turn on the news, every time you listen to the radio, every time you get on your social media platform, you're going to see the world. The world is not taking a break. So why we feel we could take a break? Ain't no break in Jesus. Ain't no break in Jesus. And you got to die to yourself daily because we live in a world that's a selfish world. Our, our best friends, we got three best friends. Me, myself, and I. That's the world we live in. Them, them our best friends. No longer do we look out for our brothers. No longer are we our brother's keepers. No longer is how the word says that you should love your neighbor as you love your... We don't do that no more. We don't do that no more. So we got to get back to the basics. We got to get back to the basics and live it a lifestyle. So I love what it says right here in Philippians 3 and 8. Track with me in Philippians 3 and 8. It says this. It says, yes, everything else is worthless when compared with the infinite value of knowing Jesus Christ, my Lord. Everything else is worthless. It's nothing more important, y'all, than, than having an infinite knowing of Jesus Christ. It goes on to say, for his sake, I have discarded everything else. I put everything else to the side. It does not matter to me. Counting it all as garbage. It said, hey, it don't even mean nothing to me. It's all garbage. This is, this is, this is a Paul speaking. He said, everything's garbage. Everything's garbage. He said, why? So that I can gain Christ. How many of us thinking along that line? They say, everything I have is garbage. Everything that belongs to me, that I think belongs to me is garbage. It doesn't even matter to me because the most important thing in my life is to gain Christ. Let's talk about this sunflower. I, I did some research and this is, this, is, this is amazing. This is amazing. So the sunflower, y'all know the sunflower is, the, is probably the most amazing flower God has created. The most amazing flower. Flower God has created. You sound like, how you know that, Pastor Flower? Well, I'm going to tell you. I'm going to tell you right now. So this, this is out the gate. They literally follow the sun everywhere it goes. A sunflower literally follows the sun. Now, I don't know about you, but one of the most amazing things that I've seen is a field of sunflowers. It's amazing. If you haven't seen it, you got to check it out. Just YouTube it or, or Google it. You can see it. You don't have to go actually go there. You can, you can take a picture. You can see it on, on, on stream. Amen. But it's amazing. You got to check this out. So watching one follow the sun is cool. I thought that was awesome. I'm like, man, this is something else. Just following one sunflower, follow the sun wherever it goes. You know, the, you know, the, go, the sun goes from east to west. That's, that sunflower follows it all the way from east to west. So watching a hundred in absolute unison, watching a whole field of sunflowers in absolute unison, 
follow the sun, y'all, it's actually quite incredible. That's incredible to watch. You got to watch this thing. You got you to Google that. You got you to gotta YouTube that. So something I found out recently is that sunflowers continue tracking the sun's direction. Check us out. Long after it sets. So we all know the sun set about five, six, or, or what have you. But sunflower don't stop there. The sunflower continues to track the sun's direction long after the sun sets. Y'all going to pick up what I'm putting down here in just a minute. So through 360 degrees, the, these sunflowers, they ensure that they're always oriented into the direction of the sun. Y'all better come get me right now. I'm, better, I'm about to tell y'all something right here. So, so their unity is totally dependent on one thing, their relationship with the sun, their relationship with the sun. Now, how many of us, we all sunflowers. I see a whole room full of sunflowers. There's a whole audience there watching us on stream that are sunflowers. All I'm trying to say is what's your relationship with the sun? What's your relationship with the sun? Are we in unison? Are we following the, the, the sun from, from sun up to sundown? And even after the sun sets, are we following it into the evening time, into our nighttime? And then we're going to circle back around and do that thing all over again? Or are we just stopping at noon? We stopping at 12? We stopping at 1? When we stopping? Because I want all of us to be like sunflowers. Who's going to follow the sun? You all know we only got one son. That's Jesus Christ. How many of us are just going to follow the sun? Jesus Christ, from the time we wake up in the morning all the way around the clock until we start to do that thing all over again. And we want to do that in unison. We want to do that in unison. So how do you do something in unison? I mean, you got you to gotta, you gotta reach out and call somebody, right? If you're going to do something together, you got to make contact with somebody because the Lord didn't have us here to live a solitary lifestyle. He said, hey, I got you. Hey, I want y'all to be in relationship with each other. Relationship, relationship. You can't be in relationship by yourself, although some people would like to think they are, but you can't be in a relationship by yourself. Me, myself, and I don't work all the time. Sometimes you're going to have to reach out and call somebody. You're going to have to reach out and text somebody. You're going to have to invite somebody over every now and again and break some bread. Y'all picking up what I'm putting down today? Y'all better come get me today. So we're not called to be cookie-cutter believers. All of us are different. But there should be a common desire in all of our lives for Christ. And that common drive that causes us to pursue Jesus. We got to pursue Jesus. It's all about Jesus. From the beginning to the end, when in, in the beginning, when it says, and when in the beginning, it says, in the beginning, all the way to the end in Revelation, when it says, amen, that whole thing is about Jesus. It's about Jesus. So a common thirst for which we all crave, and thus we gather together to deep drinkly, uh, to deep, uh, to drink deeply from the water of life. Jesus is the water that we need to drink. Amen and hallelujah. So when division or disagreements exist, they do. They come up. I mean, this is a world. It's two different. We're different people. We come from different places. We must be willing to examine our own hearts. Where your heart at? And see if our passion at the moment is, check us out. Is it the fame of Jesus' name? Or is it the fame of our own name? Is it the fame of Jesus' name? Or is it the fame of our own name? So if disagreements affect our pursuit of Christ, we got to deal with that, y'all. If you got a disagreement with anybody, the Bible says, hey, if you got a disagreement with your brother, it says first, before you even come to this altar, you go around and you go back and you find that brother, you make, you make that thing right. Don't come to this altar having some disagreements. You go make that thing right. So if you got, we have disagreements, but here's the question I want to ask y'all is, is, the, is Christ the preeminent one in your life? What's more important than Christ in your life? What's more important than Christ in your life? Are you pursuing him because, like he is the most important thing in your life? Every day you wake up, are you running after Jesus? Are you pursuing him like he's the most important thing in your life? You just, just think about Christ like this in this fashion. So you know you all want to date somebody. You all, you found, you found, you found that one. You know, she hot. You know, she hot. She looking good. What's that? What's that? 36, 24, 36. She hot. She a brick, she a winning hand. That's a winning hand. And you, you know, us men, we find that winning hand. We, we hot after that thing. We hot after that man. Y'all see that man walk across, you know, he done lifted some weights, chest sticking out. You know, he got the bicep. You know, y'all know what I'm talking about. He looking good, right? And y'all, them women, y'all, hey, I got to have that brother. That's my brother right there. So all I'm saying is when you see Jesus, 
Are you pursuing him with that same passion that you're pursuing that 36, 24, 36? Are you pursuing that, that Jesus the same way you're pursuing that, you know, that man, you know, that Denzel Washington? Y'all know him, don't y'all? Or, 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 or the rock. I know y'all know about the rock, don't y'all? Y'all pursuing him the same way? Jesus wants that kind of pursuit. He wants that kind of pursuit. So all, all, y'all ain't got to raise your hand. And I can just look at you in your eyes. I just want to know you pursuing Jesus the same way that you was pursuing that man, that woman, or maybe even that job. You know how some of us want that job. And we do anything. We turn on cartwheels to get that job. Are you turning cartwheels for Jesus? Are you willing to sell out for Jesus? So the second thing we got to look at is same convictions. Same convictions. That's the word of Christ. That's the word of Christ. So the word used here is suka. That's a, that's a Greek word, y'all. I did some homework. Y'all better come get me on this, on this language. The word is suka, which can be translated to soul or mind. Soul or mind. So take us out in, in my study. I prefer to take it to me mind, okay? And I'm going to tell you why. Because the word heart really conveys meaning, uh, conveys feeling, and so does soul. So the word, so, so suka can mean soul or mind. And heart conveys feelings and so does soul. So they're kind of the one of the same. Soul and heart are one of the same. Amen and hallelujah. So, so but Paul, I think in, in, this, in, this, in, this, in this example, so, but I think Luke is making a point by saying that they also thought the same thing. So that's why we're going to talk about mind. That's why we're looking at it in the perspective of mind. Because I think Luke is making a point to say, hey, I think they're thinking the same thing. Amen. So they were able to achieve this feat by Allowing scripture to dictate their thoughts. Scripture dictate your thoughts. How about that for a novelty? How about that? How about that for a change? Let scripture dictate your thoughts. And I didn't say your thoughts are going to dictate scripture. That means you can't pull out the Bible on what you wanted to say and, and, and what you wanted to read for your situation or your circumstance. No, you got to, scripture's going to got his own story to tell. You got to take scripture for what it is. You can't take scripture, flip it around and turn it around and make it be what you want it to be. No, scripture is true. It, it, the word of God is infallible and the word of God is in there. And ain't nothing wrong with the word of God. It's the truth. So you got to take scripture for what scripture is. So they were able to do this because they allow scripture to dictate their thoughts. They had a common standard upon which to determine thoughts of correctness. Thoughts of correctness. They ain't had no opinion. They didn't use their opinion. Everybody got an opinion these days. When you get in, when you have, when you, listen, we're talking about unity. When you with your spouse, when you with someone else, or, or you with your, your best friend, whoever it is, everybody has an opinion. Everybody has an opinion. And, and no one's person's opinion is right. It's just your opinion. It's just your thought. It's just what you got in your head. Amen. And how, it doesn't mean that it's right. It doesn't mean that someone else's opinion is wrong. It's their opinion. Amen and hallelujah. So I always say, you know, people are always talking about opinions. We're going to call it their truth. I got my truth. This is my truth. I'm like, you, you, ain't, you ain't got no truth. There's only one truth, and it's found in the Bible. So if you come to me talking about this is my truth, I hear so many things on social media. This is my truth. I hear so many things on, 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 on television. I, I want to speak my truth. What's your truth? What's your truth? Because if your truth don't line up with the word of God, that's not a truth at all. That's just your experience. That's called an opinion. That's called your, what you inside your feelings. I, I want to know about Jesus. Tell me about Jesus. Tell me about Jesus. Not to say I won't know about what's going on in your life, but, but yo, it ain't the truth. You can say this is how I feel about this thing. But it's not the truth. Because there's only one truth, and that's found in the word of God. Amen and hallelujah. Philippians 2 and 2 says this. Then make me truly happy by agreeing wholeheartedly with each other. Loving one another. Loving one another. And working together with one mind and purpose. That takes some effort. Loving one another. Working together. With one mind and one purpose. If you're going to work with somebody, that means everything ain't going to go your way, child. It ain't, this world ain't designed that way for everything to go your way. If you got to work in unity, you got to work in a group, you got to work with someone else, even if it's just one person or a group of people, you're going to have to put some of your things aside and say, what's the best thing for the group? What's the best thing for us believers? You got to say, what's the best thing for Jesus? Not the what's the best thing for me. 
What's the best thing for Jesus? What is Jesus asking us to do? So how do you know what Jesus is asking you to do? You're going to pick up that Bible and find out. Anything and everything you want to know is in the Word of God. Bar none. Amen and hallelujah. So historically, we have been people of the Bible. But our society, culture, and religion has not made the Bible our anchor in recent years. Everything is going against the Bible. Just about everywhere you turn is going against the Bible. Lazy discipleship has produced a generation or two or three that do not know scriptures. That do not know scriptures. That do not know scriptures. So what does that, what does that look like? That look like us as parents? I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just going to be 100 right now. Don't y'all be mad at me. I ain't trying to fight nobody today. Us as parents, we got to start reading the Bible to our children. We got to start picking up that Bible and opening it up and letting our children know what the Word of God says. And some of us have missed, the, come on, let's just be real. Some of us have missed the mark. We ain't, them children, our children don't know first thing first about Jesus. But they know something about, you know, uh, somebody on YouTube. They follow them people on YouTube. They know first thing first about them people on, on, on uh, them reality TV shows because they sitting there with us watching them. They sitting right there next to you watching them. And, and when you're on the phone talking to your friends about them reality TV shows, guess what they are? They right there at ear, earshot hearing everything you say. They hear more about them reality TV shows and they hear more about all, stuff on YouTube than you telling them about Jesus. We are failing our children. I ain't trying to fight nobody today. I'm just going to keep it 100. We are failing our children because I'm trying to say, when the last time we picked up a Bible and read something to our children or our grandchildren, those of us that are grandparents, when's the last time you did that? And say, let's just start at Genesis. Let's just start there. Let's, let me tell you some Bible stories. Let's just start. Let me tell you about a man named Jesus. The one who, who died on the cross so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. I'm just trying to help us understand that, that it's not too late. I don't care if your child is in the teens or if your child is a young adult. You still can show them about Jesus. As long as, and the Bible says, as long as we have breath, everybody should praise the Lord. You should praise the Lord. It's not too late to reach out to our children and share with them about Jesus. It's never too late. As long as they still living, and as long as you still living, it's never too late. So politics and church growth movements, they come along and, and, and they gave us all these new ways to do church better and, and more culturally relevant and more palpable, right? So, and, and, we, and, and we did not line them up with scripture. All these things changed. So let me give y'all something. Let me give y'all something. So first I'm going to give you a scripture so y'all so can back up what I'm going to tell y'all. So in Hebrews 10 and 25 it says this. You won't find this on the screen. I pulled this out this morning. It says, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. Y'all hear what I'm saying? Some are in the habit of doing. But encouraging one another in all the more as you see the day approaching. All the more. It says, not giving up meeting together as some are in the habit of doing. What are you talking about, Pastor? What are you talking about, Pastor? I'm talking about Go to church. I'm talking about go to church. Because some of us quit, quit going to church. Sure, I know COVID came and things changed, the world changed, and, and, and it says a habit. So COVID came and we couldn't go to church. I understand we couldn't go for a long time. Churches made some changes. They social media up their level of social media. They started doing some things differently, reaching it. And, 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 and from that perspective, COVID was good. Uh, if I'm going to say something about COVID, it was good because it helped us churches Set up a platform so that we can reach people all over the world. Everybody can know about Jesus. Not just those that come through your door, but any and everybody have an opportunity to know about Jesus. Cool. Cool. But, but y'all, COVID been over with for a minute. COVID been over with for a minute. And I'm still trying to understand why people ain't going back to church. I'm confused as to why people ain't going back to church. Now, I look around. I'm looking. You going to the basketball game. I look around, I see, uh, uh, what's the girl's name? Uh, she sings, she's a big time singer. Taylor Swift, I see her concert sold out all over the world at the price of some thousands of dollars. I, so people going back to concerts, people going back to basketball games, 
Movie theaters ain't lacking. Restaurants ain't lacking. Everybody else that open their doors, they full. How come church, how come people ain't going back to church? Now, let me tell y'all something. Y'all know better. Those that are here and those that are watching me on stream, and I know y'all here today, but y'all ain't always been here. Those that are watching on stream, you ain't always watched on stream. You just watching today. But we ain't going back to church. So what, and I'm just trying to understand, what's more important to you, Jesus or Taylor Swift? What's more important to you, Jesus or Steph Curry? What's more important to you, Jesus or the Kansas City Chiefs? I'm just trying to understand who's more important. Because I, I look around not only where I'm at, but I look around and all the churches aren't full like they used to be. Because people have made it a habit. That's what the world has sold us. That we can, it's okay to stay at home, y'all. It's a habit of staying home now. A habit, y'all know better than that. Y'all mamas didn't raise y'all better than that. And when y'all was this high, y'all always went to church. So now you get this big, you think you can, you can decide I ain't going no more? Because some change. Some change. But everything else is open. You find yourself everywhere else, but you can't find yourself in church. The most important thing that you can do each and every day is have a relationship with Jesus Christ, and you won't do that part-time. The Bible says not giving up meeting together. We done gave that thing up. We done gave that thing up. It says, and some have made it a habit of doing it. We done gave it up, and now it's a habit. Change your habit. Go to church. And then tell you, and bring your kids with you when you go to church. And tell your friends to come to church. Amen and hallelujah. Y'all better come get me today. Now, back to the lecture at hand. Rugged individualism in America teaches us to try things in the courtroom of person, of person opinion. Either public opinion or expert opinion. We got all these opinions. This makes one person's statement just as valid as another. Y'all better pick me up when I'm putting down right here. We are people whose worldwide view is based on who? The creator of God and not, and, and, and we should be using his manual. What's the manual of the Bible? And the sooner we get back to discerning all things first upon scripture, the more unified we be. Get back into the word of God. We desperately need to develop a, a deep respect and conviction for all that's found within our Bible. A deep respect and conviction for all that's found within our Bible. So we got these new, these new age, we got these new religions out, y'all. One of them's called New Age Religion. I, I was speaking with a friend and they, they educated me on it. I'm like, what's New Age Religion? So it's New Age Religion, y'all, is an is a ideology or a theology that focuses on, on these things called low vibrations, high vibrations. I'm like, what is that? So, so they base this whole religion on how they feel. Your low vibration, I mean, you bring in some low energy. You bring in bad energy. You got low vibration, your energy bad. And so they're like, I ain't trying to hang out with you because you got low vibration. So, so I, I'm, I'm going to leave you alone today. Or you got these high vibrations. That means you feeling good. I'm, I'm running with somebody with high vibrations because you make me feel good. So, so they're not looking at, at Jesus Christ. They're saying, hey, I'm going to hang around you if you got low vibrations or high vibrations. And, and this, is, this is called New Age Theology. It's something that people are actually grasping. They, it don't mention anything about God. It doesn't mention anything about Jesus. All it talks about is this, is this thing called a low vibration or a high vibration. Amen and hallelujah. So that's the, these are the kind of things that, that we're hearing today, and they're catching on in our society. They're catching on in our community. That's an opinion that someone has. Amen and hallelujah. And, and here's the thing. All of us have a theology. I want you to understand we all have a theology. A theology is nothing more than what you think. We all have a theology. Y'all picking up what I'm putting down? I'm teaching right now. We all have a theology, but here's what I want you to understand. If your theology doesn't match up with God's theology, it don't match. It don't fit. It don't fit. This, your theology has to match up with, with Jesus' theology. If you're trying to live in his will, plan, and purpose, if you want the promises of God, your theology can't be different than God's theology. You can't roll like that and think you're going to get all the blessings that God has for you. Because your theology got to fit his theology. And where do you find his theology? In the word of God. All I'm saying is pick up your Bible and get into God's theology. Because your theology, cause, listen, some of our theology is way, is skewed. It's messed up. It's jacked up. Some of our theology, we think that we know it all. No, you don't know nothing. 
You better get into that word. Because, the, listen, that's going to set you free. The Bible says, the, whom the Son sets free is free indeed. Where are you going to find about Jesus? In his word. Get into that Bible. Get into that Bible. That's where we need to be. So the third one, I'm rolling, y'all. I'm rolling. He's new age religion. Y'all better come with me or something. Y'all better miss me on that one. Miss me all the way on that one. Because I'm here to share with y'all my theology matches up to Jesus' theology. And I want y'all to do the same. So the third one, same focus, evangelism. Same focus, which is evangelism. Y'all get anything out of this today? So every chapter in Acts mentions and exemplifies the evangelistic fever that the early church demonstrates, right? So it would probably be a consistent theme in the preaching of this book is evangelism. You start reading in Acts, it's all about evangelism. But, but that's the point of the book. It's evangelism. So back then, y'all, evangelism was the primary goal of the church. It was the primary goal of the church. And check this out. If it was good enough for them, it's good enough for us. It should be the primary goal of the church today is to evangelize. And some people are going to look at me and say, I ain't no evangelist. I don't evangelize. And I'm saying everybody, everybody that has a mouth can preach the gospel, share the good news, and win a soul for Christ. Everybody. Everybody can do that. You ain't got to be like, you know, we got the spiritual gifts and I, and I know the five-fold ministry. I ain't know. Yeah, listen, I'm a well-versed pastor and I'm educated. I can tell y'all about the five-fold ministry. I know one of them is evangelism. You got to have a gift. No, 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 no. I ain't talking about that. I'm talking about just opening your mouth and say, yes, Lord. I'm talking about open your mouth and, and, and encourage somebody. I'm talking about open your mouth and, 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 and pour your pour soul, I mean, pour life into somebody. I'm saying open your mouth and say yes whenever the Lord asks you to go be his hands or when he asks you to go be his legs or he asks you to be his voice, say yes, Lord. Evangelize. That's what they did. Everybody back then, they went in the five-fold ministry of the evangelists, but they evangelized because they knew they had a voice and they knew that they could reach somebody. It just wasn't the, the role of one person. Their focus and their mission is created by the unity of purpose. They didn't, they, listen, they didn't need no evangelistic ministry. You know, some, some, some ministries, some churches, they got what they call evangelism. And we had that here. But it just wasn't one person's job or two people's job to evangelize. It's all of our jobs to evangelize. Philippians 1 and 27 says such the same. I want y'all to listen clearly to this. Listen clearly. Above all, you must live as citizens of heaven, conducting yourselves in a manner worthy of the good news about Jesus Christ. What is it saying? What is that word saying, Pastor Flowers? It says Christianity is a lifestyle, y'all. It's a lifestyle. I'm, 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 I'm breaking this down for you. I'm exegeting this scripture for you. It's saying Christianity is a lifestyle. When people come, listen, when people come into your presence, because it's a lifestyle, when people come into your presence, they should feel the presence of God. When people come into your presence, they can say that that person has spent some time with the Lord. When people come around you, they should say that person has spent some time with the Lord. Because it's a lifestyle. If you're not doing this every day, you, and if you're not ushering in the spirit of, of, of the Holy Spirit in you every day, if you're not doing that daily, then people are going to come around you and think you're just like everybody else in the world. What kind of Christianity is that? So when people come around you, when people come around me, even if they just walk by me, they should say, that person right there is different. He's a peculiar person. When they walk by Maya, they should say, she's different. She's a peculiar person. When they walk past mother, they should say, she's different. She's a peculiar person. They shouldn't walk by me and, and not feel nothing. If they do, I ain't spending enough time with Jesus. We got to spend time with Jesus. Because it's a lifestyle. And if you're spending time with Jesus, then the presence of the Lord is with you everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. Everywhere you go. So then, the Bible goes on to say, I'm still in Philippians 1 and 27. It says, then, whether I come to see you again or only hear about you, I will know that you are standing together with one spirit and one purpose. It's unity. Fighting together for the faith. Which is what? Y'all got it up there? Which is the good news? Which is the good news? Which is the good news? So some people say, well, pastor, what's the good news? 
I'm glad you asked. The good news is a message of salvation by Jesus to, to free us from sin. To free us from sin and check this out, not only free us from sin, but also to give us peace. To give us peace. And then also to reconcile us back to God. Because y'all know we were separated from, we had busted up from God. It wasn't because God busted up from us. We had bust, we were so wicked, we busted up from God. So the, the good news is it, Jesus of salvation. To get to rid us of, of, of sin, to take that weight of sin off of us and say, I'm going to take all of that weight of sin with me on the cross. So that you ain't got to have it no more, Cam. You don't have to have sin on you anymore. You don't have to have it anymore, Miss Jackie. You don't have to have sin on you anymore. You don't have to have it on you anymore. I got it all, Parker. It ain't on you no more. And then when that happens, you can experience this thing called peace that surpasses all understanding. We talk about this peace, but you can't be free and experience peace until you receive Jesus. If you ain't receiving Jesus, you're not getting that promise. I can promise you that. So the good news. So here's how I was, I was, I was reading this article on churches, and this is what I found in, one, in the article. It says, on the sheet that listed problems, so they were doing this study, a survey on this church, and they were doing their own survey, that is. So they had a, one column that talked about problems. So such things that was on, that pro, on, on the list of problems, take this out, y'all. Should, I, should, should, should not serve coffee in the church. This is a list of problems that this church had listed. Should not serve coffee in the church. Some said we should serve more coffee in the church. Some said we should have a shorter sermons. I said the devil is a lie. And some said we should have longer sermons. I said he's lying again. <laughs> some said the music we have is terrible. I thought the lady today was, she was fantastic. And some say it's terrible we don't have that kind of music much more often. All right, that was on problems. And then on the other side, it was what is needed. This is what they said was needed. They said, we need to spend more money on chairs. All right. Some said, we don't need to spend no money at all. We spend too much money. Some said, we need to start all over with the song, with the praise and worship. We need to just start all over. That's what we need to do. And some said, we need a new preacher. That, listen, it was, I didn't do this survey, so they ain't talking about me. I ain't going nowhere, and y'all ain't going to make me go nowhere. Amen and hallelujah. Y'all don't need a new preacher. Amen. 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 So, but we can find humor in that illustration, but there's something else that we can see, too. I want y'all to pick up what I'm putting now. We can see the unhappiness of those in that church. They were unhappy. We can see the lack of unity as a body of Christians in that church. And, and there's one more thing that we can see. I really need y'all to pick up on this one and hear what I'm saying. We can see a church that has dropped the ball and is teaching because nobody in all of this mentioned Jesus. Nobody in all of this mentioned Jesus. So I would say the biggest problem that that church had was that everybody was focused on what they wanted and nobody was focused on what Jesus wanted. Help me somebody. So I'm trying to understand, I want you to understand something. It's, it's, it's not about you. It's about Jesus. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. So, so here, here. This is real. This ain't no illustration. This is a real story. So I've been pastoring, and, you know, there's people that come and try to tell me what to do. Hey, pastor, you, you, you should do this, and pastor, you need to do that, and pastor, you need to do this, and and they try to tell me what to do. So first of all, I want everybody to understand that I'm self-actualized. And what does that mean? That means I don't care what you say about me. I don't care what you think about me. And you can't do nothing to me. I'm self-actualized. I want everybody to get that, write that down. Snapchat that. Uh, put that on Facebook. Uh, put that on Instagram. Self-actualized. And y'all can put my picture right next to it and say, you can't tell me nothing. And you can't tell me what to do. You can't tell me where to go. You can't tell me what to think because... I'm self-actualized. Amen and hallelujah. So they're going they to try to tell the pastor, oh, pastor, you need to do this. Pastor, you need to do that. Pastor, you should do this. And I'm sitting there thinking, at what point in time did, did, did God come and give you the vision to start TCC? When, when did God give you that vision? Because if he gave you that vision, I, wasn't, I, I mean, he didn't tell me that you was a part of it. 
Where did you get the vision to start TCC and you, you can start telling me how to run TCC? Where did you get that vision? Because I definitely wasn't part of that conversation. And if God going to tell you to, to tell me something, he going to tell me first. And he ain't told me for, he, listen, I didn't get that memo to where you was going to come and tell me what I need to do. Amen and hallelujah. That, that ain't going to happen. So you're going to tell me what I, you know what I told him? I said, I think you should go start your own church. It sounds like you need to start your own church because you got a vision. And your vision ain't the same one that God gave me. And if that's your vision, go start your own church. I'll help you start that joker. Because one thing you're not going to do is come here and try and tell me the vision that God has given me. So when did you become God with a new vision to tell me? No, go start your own church. Go start your own church. Because why? I'm self-actualized. I'm self-actualized. Go start your own church. So great power and great grace will be upon those who focus on winning people to Jesus. We got to win people to Jesus. So when we are focused on how we can win people to Jesus, we don't have time to be fussing about the temperature in the building. We got other things that's more important to do. Budgets come into focus when we, in terms of, of reaching people. We, we're trying to reach people. We don't get mad about things that are petty when we're seeking and saving the lost. Jesus said, I came to seek and save the lost. That's, the part of, that's part of the reason that we don't evangelize and grow because people worried about all these other little petty things instead of what are we here for? We are here to witness and save and, and win souls for Christ. We all can preach the gospel, share the good news, and win souls for Christ. What, what, what do we care about some of this other stuff for? It's going to take care of itself. The Bible says, why are you concerned about those things? He said, hey, I take care of the, the, the sparrows. I take care of the, the fields and the, uh, the, the, the flowers in the fields. What makes you so concerned that the guy ain't going to take care of you? He's going to take care of all of that. We're concerned about tradition and, and the kind of music and whether or not we got our own building. But very little concerned about the lost that are around us. There's people around us that need to know about Jesus. That's evangelism. We need to realign our church with one goal. The goal is making hardcore sold out, self-sacrificing, faith-sharing disciples for Jesus. For Jesus. For Jesus. It's all about Jesus. It's not about you. It's about Jesus. So the last one, and I'm out of here. We got to be, we got to have the same perspective. Same perspective. That's, we got to be stewards of, of, of Jesus. Same perspective. So having the same perspective, having the same passion, we talked about the passion, which is, which, is, which is Christ, the same thoughts, we talked about the thoughts, which is the word of God, we talked about the same focus, which is evangelism, it, they can lead to, we got to have those things that have biblical perspective on life, amen and hallelujah. But Luke, he includes for us again the reality that in the early church, it was common for people that were better off because everybody ain't got the same. We ain't all in the same, we ain't all at the same money. We ain't all got the same, we ain't, we all don't have the same. And that's by the purpose, that's by design. Amen and hallelujah. Tell some are better off to sell their property. It's what it says in the word. I ain't making this up. Look at verse 34. Sell their property to relieve the suffering of the poor. What you talking about, pastor? I'm talking about sharing some of your resources. Some of your money. Some of your time. Some of your tools. Share, because everybody ain't got it like you. And check this out, there's some people that got it better than you. Don't think you at the, the, the pinnacle of it all. But everybody ain't got it like you, so you got to share. Those that are well off, it's always somebody. You're, listen, you're well off, you're, you're well off than somebody. There's somebody that's always going to need help. I don't care if you sit here and say, I'm barely making it. I'm paycheck to paycheck. Well, there's somebody that ain't even got a paycheck. They ain't even barely making it. They ain't making it at all. And we talking about us. But I don't see no shortage of line at Starbucks. I definitely don't see no shortage of line at Chick-fil-A. I don't see no shortage of line at Cane's. We got money to do what we want to do, y'all. Don't y'all look at me like I'm crazy. We got money to do what we want to do. We can do what we want to do. We can go where we want to go. It's a choice that we make. And every now and again, you got to stop and say, you know, I'm going to help somebody today. I don't need that Starbucks. I don't need that Chick-fil-A. I 
I don't need that today. Let me, let me just set aside this $20 and go help somebody. Amen and hallelujah. Help me somebody. Because we're better off than somebody. And they did it with so much uh, regularity that they eliminated poverty in their midst. Just think about if, you, if we just took on that concept. That we, I'm not saying we're going to eliminate poverty, but we could definitely put a dent in it in our own way. Critics say that, 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 that what Luke was proposing, he said, he said that, was, that was too far-fetched. And that Luke made up this outlandish idea that this was actually happening, and it never existed in reality because it was too good to be true. That's what critics say. But it is true. They viewed the world and all these things as simply a means to an end. All this is just, hey, we just, it's, it's a mean, listen, when you die, you ain't taking none of this with you. And I do mean none of it. And here's the thing, uh, listen, I got four kids and three grandchildren. I let all of them know out the gate. I, I'm going to leave you a little bit, but I don't think you're going to get all of it. I'm going to spend all as much money as I can while I'm living. I'm going to spend as much of it. I'm going to spend as much money of mine as I got while I'm living. I'm going to break you off a little bit. Don't think you're going to get rich off of me, though. Don't think you got to go buy a car or buy. No, 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 no. It ain't going to happen. It ain't going to happen off my money. Go make your own money. All of y'all, all of them, go make your own money. Because my money ain't your money. I'm going to break you off a little something because that's what it says in Ecclesiastes. It said break them off a little something. But in Ecclesiastes, it also said don't leave them too much because they don't care about it. Y'all read the book of Ecclesiastes. Y'all going to pick up what I'm putting down. Help me somebody. Hey, I ain't doing that. You ain't getting my money. I'm going to spend as much of it as I can. And then what I don't spend, you're still only going to get your certain, your certain piece of it because the rest of it going to charity. Somebody needs some help. And it's my responsibility to help them. I am preaching. So it wasn't far-fetched. So they, they were giving all their use of their possessions, technology, livelihoods, families, to, to what? To glorify Christ. And so they viewed themselves as stewards. And that's why they were so quick to sell off their possessions for kingdom needs. They were nothing, uh, uh, there was nothing in the world whose purpose was not to glorify Christ. They were all there to glorify Christ. Why? Because everything on this earth is dispensable, y'all. It's dispensable. Hebrews 10 and 34 says this. It says, you suffered along with those who were thrown in jail. And when all of you owned what was taken from you, you accepted it with joy. You knew there was, you knew there were better things waiting for you that will last forever. What's going to last forever? What's going to last forever? Eternity with Jesus. Eternity with God. That's going to last forever. You can't take none of this with you. Share it. Help somebody. Because you can't take it with you. The only thing you're going to take with you is your soul. That's it. Because we all going to get a new body. Give that thing up. So let me close like this. Well, so when we come together in church, each one with the perspective of everything in their lives is owned by God and simply to be used at his disposal to bring honor to himself. That's unity. Unity flourishes when we all come together and bring everything we have for Jesus. So whatever resources God has granted you stewardship over are to be managed his way, not to be managed your way, to be managed his way. Check us out. So, so, so your job is God's way of financing his kingdom. Your job is God's way of financing his kingdom. That car you driving is God's way of raising up disciples and evangelizing and serving others. That's what your car is for. Why don't you use it for that? Your time and talents are to be used for the kingdom goals. So check us out, y'all. So with this attitude, there is no fighting over money because why? It ain't even yours. That money ain't yours. God give it to you and he can take it away. It's not your money. And we will spend money the way that he wants us to spend it. Ask Jesus how he wants you to spend that money. He, if, he, if he didn't tell you to go buy a new car, don't you go buy a new car, child. If he didn't tell you to go buy a new house, you better not go buy, you better not put that money down on a new house, child. 
if he didn't tell you to go on that vacation and spend thousand dollars on that vacation, you better keep your tail right here in Surprise, Arizona. Y'all picking up what I'm putting down? Help me some. But if he tell you to stay out of Macy's, Dillard's, or pick one, pick a, pick a department store. If he tell you to stay out of it, you better stay out of it. Some of us go to Target and spend hundreds of dollars. He tell you to stay out of Target, stay out of Target. Because you see, our, our passion is Christ. Our God is the Word and the Spirit. And our goal is evangelism to the glory of God. But as well, our passion, our thoughts, and our goal, we must fight to keep the Bible's perspective on money rather than the world's. It's a perspective on money, too. As a matter of fact, money is mentioned more than just about anything in the Bible. Understand how you're supposed to use your money for Jesus. Amen and hallelujah. Help me, somebody. And I love this. I love this song. I want y'all to pick up this song. I love this song. The, Bible, the song goes like this. It says, silver and gold. Silver and gold. Oh, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. No fame or fortune. Y'all better come get me right now. No riches untold. Help me, somebody. Oh, I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. It goes on to say, hey, don't give me a mansion on top of the hill. Don't give me the world with a shallow thrill. But just give me a savior. My life he can hold. Because I'd rather have Jesus than silver and gold. Y'all better come get me today. Help me somebody. So all I'm trying to say is, we got to live a life for Jesus. Unity is living a life for Jesus. Unity is living his life for Jesus. So everybody to your feet. I'm done. You all get some out of today's message? Everybody to your feet. Everybody to your feet. Silver and gold. I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus. So there's someone here underneath the sound of a voice that said, I'd rather have Jesus. I want Jesus today. Someone watching us on stream, I'd rather have Jesus than anything else in this world. If that's you, just raise your hand and say, I'd rather have Jesus. I'd rather have Jesus. Everybody should have their hand up saying, I'd rather have Jesus than silver or gold. So if there's anyone here at the sound of my voice that said, I want, I want to give my life to Jesus on today. I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior. If there's anyone here that says, I want Jesus to be my Lord and Savior, just raise your hand. Want to accept the gift of salvation on today. If there's anyone here at the sound of my voice that, that, that has, has moved away from Jesus, yeah, you say, sanctified, filled with the Holy Spirit, but you've moved away. He was like, I just need to get back to Jesus. I, I don't let some of this world stuff seep into my brain, into my mind, into my, into my actions. I just need to get back to Jesus. If that's you, just raise your hand. So I, I need to get back to Jesus today. And I'm not going to tarry. I'm going to do it right now. If that's you, just raise your hand. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. If there's anyone that the sound of my voice, they say, I just need a church home. Everyone needs a pastor. Everyone needs a pastor. I know most of you all here are already members. Someone on stream that's watching may say, I need a pastor. Everyone needs a pastor. I would love to be your pastor. And I know everyone here, y'all going to start going to church every Sunday. Every Sunday. Ain't going to be no one by four. Ain't going to be no two by four. Ain't going to be no three by four. You're going to be a four by four. You're going to show up for Jesus every Sunday. And as a matter of fact, you're going to show up for Jesus on Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, on Saturday. Y'all better come get me today. And on Sunday, you showing up for Jesus every day. But if there's anyone here that says, I need a church home, just raise your hand. I'd love to be your pastor. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. Y'all may have a seat where you can. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, get a Lord a hand clap in this place. 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. So now we're just going to move forward in our, in our service. And now it's time for giving. It's time for the offering. Well, it's time for the offering. Praise the Lord. So we have multiple ways to give here. If anyone here needs an envelope, just raise your hand. We'll make sure you get an envelope if you need an envelope. We have multiple ways to give here. We have Cash App. You should see it on screen. And those that are watching on social media, you can see that as well. We got Cash App. That's Transformation AZ. We got Venmo. That's at Transformation AZ. And we have Text to Give. That's 844-893-3298. So again, we have Cash App, that's dollar sign Transformation AZ. We have Venmo, that's at Transformation AZ. We have Text to Give, 844-893-3298. We have the traditional way of a check or cash you can place in an envelope. For those of you all that need an envelope, our greeters are here to make sure you have an envelope. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. So all minds clear. I'm giving. Amen. Let's just pray over our, our offering on today. Dear Father, we thank you. We love you. We just thank you for how you're moving here at TCC. We just thank you for how you're just taking lives and changing lives. You're transforming hearts. You're renewing minds. We just thank you, Lord, for all you're doing here at TCC. We just thank you for all the resources and for you giving us the vision to seek and save the lost, to Go out into the community, the highways and the byways, and make a difference in someone's life on today and each and every day. We just thank you, Lord, for the vision and the resources that you've given us to improve lives, to share the gospel, to win souls for you, to share the good news, and win souls for you. So we thank you, Lord, for the resources, the financial resources, the time that's been given. We just thank you, Lord. We ask that you multiply it exponentially so that we can continue to do your work in your kingdom. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen and hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. So now it's time for the announcements. So while Lady Renee is coming up for the announcements, I do want to share that we did a volunteer yesterday at New Leaf. So there's a, a few of us that came out uh, to New Leaf, it's a homeless shelter for battered women and children. And we were there yesterday and we provided lunch for them. So this is a great opportunity for those of y'all that want to partake with us next next month. It's a once a month deal. We go every third Saturday. And so we went there and we, we bought the food, bought the food, we prepared the food, we cooked the food, we served the food, and then we cleaned up after. We did everything from A to Z. And it's a, a shelter for battered women and children and there's lives that, that we touch there's people there that was just so thankful and grateful that we took time to, to spend with them and, and like I said it's someone that always needs some help someone always, always needs, and you can do it we're God's hands we're his feet we're his legs and we're his voice we can do it so that's a every Saturday thing so I want to thank all those that came out yesterday to participate in it glory to God thank you Lord it was time well spent, and we look. We do this every Saturday. It's an every Saturday thing. Amen? Amen and hallelujah. And then we got our prayer call. So you'll see a slide up here when we're doing announcements on our prayer call. Thank you for joining Transformation Community Church, and these are our church announcements. We have a corporate morning prayer call every Monday through Saturday morning from 6.30 a.m. to 6.45 a.m. Arizona time. You may call in and join us at 681 9990134 the access code is 931060 pound we have small groups on tuesday wednesday and thursday tuesday is our discipleship class which is led by pastor curtis jackson
Wednesday is 52 Weeks with Jesus, which is led by Elder Paul and Mother Mary Outlaw. On Thursday, we have Come As You Are, Hope You Leave Better, and that is led by Jordan and Jay. Our small groups are from 7 p.m. to 8 p.m. Arizona time. A text is sent out with a Zoom link for each small group. If you would like to join the small groups, please give us a call at 480-524-7080, and we'll be sure to get the link to you. We have weekly devotionals. On Wednesday, we have Winning Women Wednesday with Lady Renee. On Friday, we have drill time with our very own Pastor Jason Flowers. You may stay connected with us via Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and that is at TCC Arizona. This concludes our weekly church announcements and have a blessed day.